at the end of the day, most of the things that we purchase or what we call investments are really liabilities. And the only one thing that we can truly invest in that will be the best investment ever, that will give us multiplication and the highest return on our investment, that will be able to be uh, passed down to generation and generation because of what you are investing in yourself is your... Let's go. You are incredible. Your body has a purpose. Your life has a purpose. You were designed to live the best life possible. What's going on, my beautiful people? We are back with a brand new week and a brand new episode. And I'm super excited to inform you that we are starting two episodes this week moving forward. We'll be releasing a brand new episode every Tuesday and Thursday, so stay tuned. If you haven't already subscribed, click the subscribe button, click the little bell for all the notifications of our up and coming episodes. And if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast station, click the button, follow button, so that you can get all the notifications. Look. I just want to say thank you because look, when we first decided to do this uh, podcast, I had been pondering this idea for the past two years. It was a while before I actually decided to pull the gun, so to speak. And I just want to say thank you because the feedback has been incredible. Thank you to all of the faithful subscribers and all of those that have been tuning into our episodes. Look, I just want to say thank you because this podcast is for you to bring insight, to bring hope, to just encourage you to know that you are not defeated and that you're incredible. Inside of you, you have everything you need to start living the life that you desire. And I want to join you in this journey. I want to support you. I want to encourage you. And I want you to know that I'm here on your side to help you get to the life that you truly desire. So thank you once again. And uh, I've got an exciting episode for you today. Seven things that you should know. Okay, seven things that you should know to be able to acquire the health and fitness life that you desire. So without further ado, let's jump on into today's episode. Mic check. Mic sound okay? Camera one good. Camera two good. All right, here we go. So today we're going to be talking about the seven things you should know to achieve your health and fitness desires. There's so much information out there. And what I want to do is just really clarify and just keep it simple because there is really simplicity. There's profoundness that we can find. There's, there's depth that we can find in simplicity. And one of the things that I want to do is really focus on the major points that cause a shift to happen, but not only a shift that's going to happen like in your, in your exterior, right? In your physicality, on how you look, on how you, you might feel on your confidence level, your energy level, but also in getting to that piece that we have started to hear a lot about that I've been talking about for many years when I first started my my uh, uh, fitness um, industry in, in the fitness industry, which was that word lifestyle, right? Really teaching you how to shift and make that change to make it a lifestyle. Because look, here's the reality: for anything to become our lifestyle, we've got to know exactly the principles and the things that are going to help us make that shift, and it starts with us. It starts with you changing your identity, changing our identity so that everything that we do is in alignment. There's a lot of things out there that we can apply, that we can apply rather, that we can take action on, that we can do. But if we're not in alignment and this goes for our understanding, our, our thoughts, right? Our habits, our beliefs, our way of thinking, our understanding about food, of health, our habits of exercise. If there's any type of disconnection, we're not going to fully obtain the results that we desire. And I'm really going to come with another episode on this where I'm really going to be talking about the disconnect, right? What that is and, and, and where that is and why this is so profound. So let's jump in the seven things you should know to achieve your health and fitness desires. Number one, we want to talk about 
changing your relationship with food. I talk about this a lot and I'm going to continue to drive this point home because look, it all starts with our relationship with food. What does that mean? It's how we conduct, how we relate with, how we associate with, how we go day to day with our relationship with food. In the same way that we nurture a friendship, uh, a partner, if we're married, right? The same way that you can be in relationship with your boss, with your coworkers, it is the exact same way that we need to look at food. And so if today we're looking at our life and we look at, I want to change my health. I want to change my life. I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I feel. I'm overweight. I'm unhealthy. I went to the doctor and he gave me some bad news. He says my triglycerides are high. He says my, um, my blood sugar levels are too high. My cholesterol is high. All of these things are happening with me. I want to change that. Well, In order to change that, that means that right now, your current food relationship, your current choices, your current habits with food are what keep you in this current state of life. Because look, everything that we do in life, everything about us is impacted by food. Why? Because food has the ability to impact our energy to impact our mood, to impact our physicality, our performance, to impact the way we think, our cognitive abilities, to impact our memory, to impact how we feel internally about ourselves, the way we speak. But it also impacts every organism within us. Because through what we eat is what our body absorbs so that it can utilize So if today we have these high levels that should not be high, right? We see now in the mirror that, hmm, I, I, I don't like the way this looks. I'm, I'm overweight. My pants don't fit me good. My clothes don't fit me good. I'm looking at the mirror and I'm just not satisfied. That is evidence that there is an issue, that there is something that is off. There is something that is a problem that is causing you to be in this way. Therefore, food shapes everything about us. It impacts everything. It literally is what is shaping you today into looking how you look. So therefore, if we want to start to get to the place where we are fully achieving our health and fitness desires, and I'm not just saying like achieve it once in a while, right? Like a lot of a lot of stories out there that people lose weight, they release weight, they get to a certain health state that they're feeling good, they get they they start to feel happy with themselves and then they lose it all. I'm talking about something that can be longevity. That can be for your entire life, something that you can adopt as your new level of standard, your new life standard so that you can live the life that you desire. If we want that, the first thing we need to look at is what is my relationship with food like? And if look, we're being honest with ourselves and we know that, yeah, it's, it's not good. It's not where it should be. Look, we got to be honest with ourselves or maybe it is good, but then we can ask ourselves, well, can I make it better? So the number one thing we want to look at is to change our relationship with food. If it is unhealthy, let's identify why. What is those things that are causing you to make unhealthy food choices? Because it's about identifying the root cause that is causing you to stay in this habitual pattern, to stay in this repetitive behavior pattern, to stay in this lifestyle. Because right now you're in a lifestyle. And that lifestyle might be unhealthy food choices, unhealthy uh, uh, habitual choices when it comes to um, um, the way you take care of yourself, right? The way you don't exercise, being sedentary. That's a lifestyle in itself. So the number one thing that will start to impact everything is changing our relationship with food. Number two, we want to give up our weight loss mentality. Well, David, what do you mean by that? 
And this goes specifically for anyone that is in this path, right? To want to release weight. And I don't like to use weight loss. I like to use a different word. And so when I'm talking about giving up this weight loss mentality, it's really about giving up this idea of loss. When we say weight loss, anything that is associated to loss, it affects us psychologically because the word loss is a negative word. So what happens when we're seeing what we're, when we're saying, I want to, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. I want to, I want to lose this fat. I want to get rid of it. I, I, I don't want it anymore. I want to lose it. Well, subconsciously, everything or anything we want to lose, it automatically draws us to actually try to find it. Let me give you an example. Have you ever lost your keys? And you say, I lost my keys. What happens in your brain immediately when you say, I lost my keys? Boom. It's like chaotic mode, chaos mode. Let's go find the keys, right? And we're looking under the sofa. We're looking under the bed. We're throwing the pillows. We're taking out everything from our purse, from our backpack, right? We're doing everything in our power to be able to find those keys. Same thing goes for anything else. You lose your wallet. You lose your money. You lose an important paper. You literally try to find it and you don't stop until you do. And that is the exact same thing that happens psychologically with us is when we say weight loss, there's a fight inside of us that even though you want to get rid of it, you want to lose it, your psychological aspect, your brain is literally also fighting inside because it wants to find it again. Because anytime we lose something, we automatically are drawn to find it. And this happens when we are in this journey, which is why a lot of times we'll find ourselves, we lose 15 pounds, we lose 20 pounds, we lose 30 pounds. And subconsciously, because we've lost it, we now feel unsafe. We feel unprotected because a lot of times when we have this excess weight, for many, it's a protection mechanism. It's a safety net. They feel secure behind it. Even though they don't want it, it's still a sense of hiding behind the fat, right? Hiding behind the excess weight, hiding and protecting themselves from getting hurt, from failing, from anything that life throws at them. So that is why many times when we say, I want to lose weight and we lose it, we end up going back to these old habits we end up going back to this old lifestyle, this old way of life, and we end up finding that weight again and sometimes more just to make sure that we're protected. So what do we do then? I want you to start adopting a weight release mentality, meaning I don't want this. I want to release myself from it. When I release myself from something, there's no more fear attached. It just simply means I am making the choice to say, I want to get away from this. I no longer want it in a positive way because we're not now, we're no longer using a negative connotation, right? A negative word like loss. We're now saying release. It now gives you permission to say, yeah, I want to release myself from this. I want to release myself from this choice. I want to release myself from this group of friends. I want to release myself from these habits. I want to release myself from these bad food choices. So now it empowers us. It takes this fear away. It takes this shame away. It takes this, this um, protection thing that we're, we're trying to hide from away. And now we can say, release say it there with me, release. There's something about that word when we can just say, I want to just release it. It's almost like saying when, when we're, when we're holding on to something and then they tell us, just let it go, right? Just let it go. And when you finally let it go, it's like, there's this sense of satisfaction that comes with it. So number two, we want to give up our weight loss mentality and adopt a weight release mentality. Number three, we got to stop unhealthy eating habits. 
So what does that mean? Fad diets, right? Are taking us to the place to stay stuck in this mentality of I've got to live in this certain way, but it does not deliver us from unhealthy food habits. So that goes back to our relationship with food, right? It's about looking at, well, what are my unhealthy eating habits and what is keeping me stuck in this habit that I cannot give up? That I keep repeating this behavior pattern that I've just now adopted, that I've learned, that I've acquired, that I've developed throughout my life, that I've just chosen for myself. And when whatever we're doing is unhealthy and we repeat that pattern, it becomes our habit which therefore now links us to that type of lifestyle because whatever we do on a daily basis, the choices we make habitually, right? And habitually means like you're just doing them without even thinking. They just happen, right? Like when you go take a shower, I bet you you take a shower the exact same way every single time. The way you go in, you turn on the light, open the curtain, maybe start the water, right? Then you get undressed. You go in with the right, with the same foot. You adjust the curtain the same way. You start scrubbing the same way. You start, you do it all automatically. It's habitual. You don't even think about it. And through our life, as we're living, we also adopt these habitual eating habits. We adopt these habitual food choices. We adopt these habitual ways of doing things with our food. So we have to be honest with ourselves as we're venturing in this journey, right? Are my food choices, are my eating habits healthy or are they not? Because if they're not, then we have to really be honest with ourselves and looking at, well, is this the lifestyle that I want to continue to live? Is this something I want to hand down or pass down to my generation as parents? Is this something I want my kids to learn? Is this something I want, you know, my my grandkids to know and to learn how to live this type of life with food? Because your current eating habits have been learned. You were taught how to di- how to carry this these habits with food. You were taught how to make these food choices. And that could be from a young age growing up by your parents, your grandparents, whoever raised you, that then as you grow older from uh, uh, school, they teach us, right? Your friends, your colleagues, then there maybe your coworkers as you develop new friends, your environment where you're living in, where you're surrounded by, all of those things start to shape our eating habits. So therefore today we've got to look at, are my eating habits healthy? If they're not, then we've got to put an end to that by learning how to master our eating habits. And it really comes down to the simplicity of looking at, well, what foods today can I take out? What foods am I eating that are turning into sugar quickly that are now causing me to be addicted or attracted to sugar foods that are then now causing my insulin to spike, which are then now causing me to stay in this codependent life, which is causing this excess fat to be stored in my body, right? Mastering our eating habits come together as we develop a better relationship with food. So today, take a close look at that. And look at what's one thing I can stop doing today that if I continue, then that can compound and start to get me on a healthier track with food. Number three. No, we're going to number four. We want to give up diets and restrictive meal plans. This is a big thing in the health and fitness industry. And look, when I say it makes me angry, it infuriates me. Because look, me being a part of the health and fitness industry, the way they push diets and pills and fad diets and restrictive meal plans and all of this garbage is what is destroying people's lives because they are teaching them an unsustainable, unhealthy way of doing things. Do diets and restrictive meal plans work? Yes, they do. I'm sure many of you watching today or listening in today have had results because I 
I don't know. I've not met of anyone that is on their health and fitness journey to want to release weight or even to shred some fat and to burn and to, to build some muscle. We've all tried a certain type of diet, right? But those things are unrealistic long term because they're unsustainable. We were not created to be in this type of lifestyle because I like to say this. If today what you're doing does not align with the type of life that you have, for example, let's say you're a CEO, you're a business owner, you run you know, a business with multiple employees, or maybe you're a manager, maybe you're, you're an employee working for a company that just has you know, crazy hours. Maybe you're a parent that stays at home and educates their kids. You homeschool or you're simply running a home-based business. Look, all of those things are our lifestyle. It's what we do. So if our, the, the things that we're doing, right? And that goes for the way we're eating, the way we're sustaining ourselves. If that doesn't align with your current lifestyle, look, you're going to fail at some point. Diets and fad diets, all they are is, is a mechanism that they use to play with your emotions to get you to bite on this bait so that you can live dependent on this diet, but they know it's, it's a short-lived life. It's a short-term result aspect. You're not going to be able to sustain that long-term. So we set ourselves up to fail in the moment that we start to acquire this type of choice for our life. Because it's really about learning how to make, again, better food choices, learning how to change our habits, learning how to identify what things are keeping me stuck in this behavior pattern of an unhealthy life, making unhealthy food choices, making unhealthy uh, um, decisions for myself when it comes to health and fitness. And being strategic to understand how to develop a flexible nutrition uh, lifestyle for yourself that you will now know exactly how much portions to eat of foods, what are the better food choices to make, what are the things that I should be choosing, what are the, the, the decisions I should be making throughout the day. Because now that is going to help you take control of your life, take control of your lifestyle, take control of what goes in your mouth. So it's about adopting this lifestyle of nutrition, understanding the principles that drive nutrition. That is what's going to make this lifestyle long-term sustainable forever. So number four, let's give up fad diets and restrictive meal plans and start learning how can I do this process while still eating the foods that I love because it is possible that is something that I do with my students every single week. Now, we're moving on to number five. Stop doing what others are doing. And I mean this. Stop doing what others are doing because you are different. Not everybody is the same. Therefore, not everything is going to work in the same way. What helps Sally may not help you. What helped John may not help you. So many today find themselves getting advice from coworkers, getting advice from their friends, getting advice from what, what others are doing. And look, don't get me wrong. That is helpful to a certain extent. However, we need to understand that we are unique individuals and we've got to understand what works for me, what works for you, right? Because again, we all have different lifestyles. Something's going to work differently for someone that is an office worker than for somebody that runs a CEO, a business as a CEO, right? Because they're just two different worlds. So we really have to be cautious of who are we getting this information from? Who are we learning from? Who is giving this information to us? Who is providing it to us? Who am I copying? Because at the end of the day, just because it works for somebody else doesn't mean it's going to work for you. That is why we need to start to learn what specifically is going to work for me. 
What specifically is going to work for my body type? What specifically is going to work for my lifestyle? What specifically is going to work for my way of doing things? Because if I tell you, you got to wake up every day at five in the morning, you have to go to the gym and work out for two hours and you absolutely hate waking up early in the morning and you absolutely hate going to the gym, look, you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, at the beginning, you're going to be excited, right? You're going to be motivated. You're going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I just saw a Mark. He lost 20, 30 pounds doing this. Well, I guess this is a way to do it. So you get up one day, you do it for three days, you maybe push it out for a week and then coming into week two, you're like, crap, this is exhausting. Can't do this. You hated going to the gym every moment. You hated waking up. Now you're grumpy throughout the whole day. Now you're taking it out on your husband or I'm sorry, now you're taking it out on your wife. You're taking it out on your friends. You're taking it out on everybody. Like it's just not working. So it's really about looking at what am I like, who am I like, and then we start crafting your journey around that. We start crafting your process around that. So stop doing what others are doing because I promise it is about what you need to do and learning what you need to do to become effective and get results. Now let's move on to number six. Invest in your self-development. Look, this is the most important thing that we can do. A lot of times when we look at things that we currently invest in today, aren't really investments. Like, Let's look at you invest in a car, right? Quote, unquote. You invest in clothes. You invest in furniture. Invest in decor. Invest in lamps and tables. And I don't know, invest in jewelry, All of those things lose their value the moment you purchase them. And now, granted, if we're looking at jewelry, well, maybe some of those things can, through time, they can hold it depending on what metal you're you're purchasing. But at the end of the day, most of the things that we purchase or what we call investments are really liabilities. And the only one thing that we can truly invest in that will be the best investment ever that will give us multiplication and the highest return on our investment that will be able to be uh, passed down to generation to generation because of what you are investing in yourself is your self-development. Because in that, as you invest in that self-development, you're self-developing something new or making yourself better. Looking at what things can I improve in? What things can I change? What things can I master? What things within me can I focus on making better? Your self-development is the most important thing you can do because in that is your brain, right? It's your mindset, your beliefs, the way you're conducting life, your self-development, the way you're doing things and the way you're, you're raising your kids and the example that you're, you're living, you're leaving and the things that you are literally developing, the legacy that you're leaving behind. Parents, the best thing you can ever do to your kids is invest in yourself. In being coming better, in being better, in becoming better parents. Most times we'll look at, well, when I, when I talk to parents, many of them, and maybe you've said this if you're a parent, you say, I'm willing to give anything to my kids. I'll give them toys. I give them vacations. I give them the best things. I give them the brand new Jordans. I give them anything that they want. But most times I am not able to play with them. I'm not able to uh, do things physically with them. I'm not able to enjoy certain areas because maybe I'm not physically able because I'm not healthy enough because I get tired. I don't have enough energy. Therefore, the best thing you can give your kids is your health. The best thing you can give your kids is a healthy parent, a healthy mom, a healthy dad, a strong, fit parent that can have fun with them, that can play games with them, that can go hiking, that can go on trips, that can be there to support them, that can play sports with them, that can practice with them, that can do the things that they want us to do with them. There is nothing better than investing in yourself. Number six, invest in yourself. 
Invest in your health. Invest in gaining the knowledge you need to live healthy. Invest in yourself. Why? Because you deserve it. Because you're worth it. Because you have so much to give and know that your health impacts everything because your health is bigger than you. Your health impacts your kids. It impacts your finances. It impacts your work. It impacts your coworkers. It impacts your relationships. It impacts your mood. You, everything. That is why, number six, invest in your self-development. And that brings me to number seven. Hire a coach and a mentor. If you see that today you've tried so many things and you still are stuck and you're still in the place that you're unsatisfied with life, it's time to hire a coach and a mentor. There's a lot of information out there. I'm sure you can watch YouTube videos, try and learn it that way. You can talk to a trainer in the gym. You can talk to your coworker, a friend who might have some insight about it, but it's never the same if you hire. That means you're again investing in somebody to guide you, to help you, to, to, to take you to there because look, a coach gives you information, gives you instructions, right? Tells you what to do and a mentor gives you wisdom and focus to guide you to get to your place that you desire, to guide you to the life that you desire, to get you there. It makes you get there faster. They provide a shortcut to get you faster so that we keep wasting time doing all these other things that seem to be good. We watch an influencer and we think, oh yeah, he's doing that. I got to do this. Oh yeah, this person's doing that. I got to do that. Oh yeah, this, this nutritionist said this thing. So let me try that. I mean, cool. You can try that. There's nothing wrong with that. Look, I mean, I think there is something to gain from that. But it's never the same as hiring a coach and a mentor that can stream it, that can fast track it for you, that can tell you, look, forget about all this stuff. You don't need to be doing this right now. Matter of fact, you don't need to be doing that at all, ever. Just focus on this. Let's go down this clear path. Just stay on course with this so you can get there faster. Because look, we we don't know how much time we have on earth, right? And in that, it's like we're, we're, we're never getting younger. So why not be able to shortcut that so that we can, the time that we have left on earth, truly live the life that we desire and be able to embrace it, enjoy it, and bring everyone around us into that same journey so that we can empower them to do the same. So number seven, let's hire a coach and mentor. So now to kind of recap, let's... Let's recap the seven things that I recommend you do to acquire the life and health that you desire is number one, change your eating relationship with food. Let's do that one again. And that's number seven. Now to recap, let's close the seven things to do to achieve your health and fitness desires. Number one is change your relationship with food. Look, everything about what we do starts with our relationship with food. If today you're not happy with where you're at, it starts with what your relationship with food is. So today, let's do things that we can to start changing that relationship. Number two, give up your weight loss mentality. Look, Let's stop speaking negatively so that we don't have an internal fight with us and let's start changing the way we speak using proper positive words, which will help us still stay the course and achieve our desire. Let's start requiring a weight release mentality instead. Number three, stop unhealthy eating habits. Look, It's all about your eating habits. It's all about the things you're doing each day, your your habitual choices that you're making. So today, if you're being honest with yourself and you recognize, yeah, I don't have healthy eating habits, well, let's start putting an end to it. And today, one thing is look at what area, what's one thing I can stop doing which can start impacting my 
eating habits. Number four, give up your diets and restrictive meal plan. Give them up. Put them away. No longer. Because it's really about learning how to make better food choices. How to make better habits. How to develop better habits. How to develop better uh, uh, things that we can do on a daily basis. How to develop a better way changing our identity is how we can start to make that lasting change. Number five, stop doing what others are doing, plain and simple. Stop copying others. Stop copying Sally. Stop copying Joe and start learning on what is it that I need that will start to give me the results that I desire. Number six, invest in your self-development. It's the most incredible thing you can do for you, for your kids, and for those around you. Invest in you because when you invest in you, nobody can ever take that away from you. That is the best investment yet. And number seven, hire a coach and a mentor. Look, we don't need to do it alone. You don't need to do this journey, this process alone because there are coaches and mentors like myself that can guide you and help you to get to where you want to get to. So I'd like to support you. If there's anything I can do to support you, know that I am here for you. I want to serve you and I want to help streamline this process for you. I've been doing this for 15 years and this is the one thing that I am most passionate about. You know, I lost my childhood best friend at the age of 21 to obesity. He went to get a gastric bypass surgery two days later, got an infection and he died. And in that moment, after getting through the guilt and the shame of believing that I could have done more for him, I made a commitment. And I said that as long as I knew of someone or I can impact somebody, avoid going through what my best friend went through, I was going to do it. 15 years after, I'm still doing it today. And I want to serve you and support you. So if you want to connect with me, if you have any questions, maybe you're interested in how I can support you, reach out. Let's have a conversation. I love building relationships and that's what this platform is for. So if you have any questions or want to just connect with me to have a conversation, visit my web, visit my website, www.davidhernandez.co. That is davidhernandez.co. You'll see it down here at the bottom. And you can also send me an email if you have any questions to listen not defeated at gmail.com. Listen not defeated at gmail.com. You'll find all that information here at the bottom. And if you want to also connect with me so I can get to know you, let's connect on social media. You can find me on all social media platforms on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on YouTube, on um Uh, Twitter, on Instagram, all of those you can find me under my handle at Dave K Hernandez. That's at Dave K Hernandez. You'll see it there at the bottom. And I want you to know that you're incredible. I'm here for you and know that you have everything inside of you to live your best life possible. Before I go, I want to just remind you, we are very, very close. Time is running out to my for my two-day conference, First Sleep to Better Health, happening June 10th and 11th. Look, this is a two-day conference. It's going to be expensive. It's going to be spectacular. It's going to be incredible. It's a two-day jam-packed Friday and Saturday event. I'm going, to be talking, I'm going to be talking about just this, teaching you how to master your eating habits, how to put an end to emotional eating, stress eating, boredom eating, binge eating, right? Learning how to stop doing these unhealthy habits so that you can finally take control of your health and start living the life that you desire. So it's first sleep to better health Dot com. Visit my website. You'll find all the information there. Look, I'm going to be breaking down the same formula that I use with my students, something that I charge thousands of dollars for. I'm actually giving it to you to support you so that you can streamline your process and get there faster so you can start living the life that you desire. I'm going to break down the four-step process I use to help you identify why you keep doing things that you don't want to do, why you keep making the bad food choices that you're making even though you don't want to do it. I'm going to teach you how to identify the root cause of that, teaching you how to um, identify your triggers that are causing you to fall into this behavior pattern without knowing. And I'm going to give you a four-step process. It's a formula to help you put an end to emotional eating 
and unhealthy eating habits for good. Just like Allison's done, just like Cynthia's doing, just like um, Andrew's done, just like um, Teresa and Aaron are doing, Lori and Jeff and Jenna and so many incredible people are doing it and I want you to be able to do it. So go visit my website for more information and how to register. I'll have the breakdown of what those two days are going to consist of. Visit www.firstsleeptobetterhealth.com, firstsleeptobetterhealth.com, register, get your seat so that I can see you there and support you. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is, listen, you're not defeated and I am your host, David Hernandez. If you haven't already subscribed, click the subscribe button, click the little bell for all the notifications of our up and coming, up and coming episodes. And again, if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast station, click the follow button so that you do not miss an episode. Thank you again for tuning in. I hope to see you on our next episode. And remember, you are incredible. Go out, crush it and live your best life. You're not defeated. Peace.